Hello, everyone. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our blog from the Kama Sutra to 2020, where we answer your questions, your concerns, your worries around sex and sexuality. So, Anvita, I picked this really interesting question. Out of all the ones that came today, I felt that this one was fascinating. It comes from a young girl and it says, Dear Seema, my question is, what does the Kama Sutra say about the concept of squirting? Is it real? Can women actually feel such orgasms? Is it good for female health and metabolism? And are there any bad side effects of squirting? Now, in all the questions that we've received up to now, this is, I have to say, over the years, the first time that somebody's actually asked about squirting. And I'm absolutely delighted because I have a story to tell you. Now, very quickly, just before I start, uh, for those of you who may not have come across the idea or the concept of squirting, squirting is a form of female ejaculation. Anvita, of course, will explain it much better in a little while. But it's a sort of form of female ejaculation. Now, uh, the Kama Sutra itself does not say anything about squirting. Uh, the Kama Sutra does not talk about any kind of sexual fluids at all. It does not talk about ejaculation, about semen, not even about bodily fluids like sweat or urine or whatever. However, other ancient texts do. Squirting, I am told that uh, it was one of the high points of female pleasure. It was supposed to be a in very intense form of female pleasure, if you could actually make somebody squirt. And where I heard about it first was from a young man called Habib Akande, who has actually written a book on this. He tells me that apparently this was part of the tradition of female pleasure in ancient Rwanda. So in, in the African countries, squirting, in ancient times at least, squirting was a very important part of female pleasure. And it was believed that a man, unless he could actually bring a woman to that kind of pleasure, you know, where she would squirt, he was not a good enough lover. Of course, over time with patriarchy, that story has changed a little bit. And now it's become that if the woman cannot squirt during lovemaking, she's not a good enough lover to have. But it didn't actually start with that. And what is even more interesting, it was such a big part of ancient African tradition that at some stage, about 20 years ago, a politician in Brazil, when he heard the story for the first time, he was so taken up with it. And he said that he felt so guilty that he hadn't considered that his wife was capable of so much pleasure. And to make it up to her, he actually decided to institute a world female orgasm day. So an international female orgasm day um, as an acknowledgement to the amount of pleasure that women can feel. And incidentally, that is on the 8th of August, which is coming up very soon. But Anvita, talking about it from a purely psychological point of view, what would you like to tell us about squirting? Well, I definitely want that lover from Rwanda <laughs> have to make sure that I squirt. Like, that is definitely... I, and I de and I, from this video, I just want to say one thing to all the men and women listening to it. Please do not feel the pressure that you now need to have an orgasm with squirting. It's difficult enough to have, for women to have an orgasm, and this is just going to be an added issue. Uh, but just to explain what squirting is, squirting is a type of orgasm. When women reach their climax or when women are, when they're having an orgasm, they discharge a fluid. There are two different types of fluid that could be discharged. One is called squirting and the other one is called the female ejaculate. The squirting fluid that comes out, comes out from the urethra and it's very diluted. It's very watery and it's like, um, and it's like diluted urine basically, but it's a decent amount that comes out from the urethra. Like I'm not mean loads of amount, but it's not uh, as little as the ejaculate. The female ejaculate, which comes out of the vagina is a thickish, milk looking whitish fluid. So just to distinguish between the two, um, but they're both 
types of orgasm that women have experienced. And women say that it gives them a different type of pleasure when they squirt. So just a quick question. You said that um, the squirting actually comes out of the urethra and it has some um, some content of urine in it. Does, so how would one react? I mean, are we going to have now people saying, ooh, yuck, and so on? Or what, what is that like? Yeah, so, you know, you can't really make out. It, it's, it's fluid. You'll see fluid on your sheet. It doesn't have a smell. It doesn't have a taste. It doesn't have any, like, strong features, like it's yellow or something like that. So it just feels more like water that comes out. Uh, but when in laboratories it's been tested, there is urea and there, you know, one can feel, see traces of urine in it. Um, so please do not feel like, oh my God, it's diluted urine. Women do really enjoy squirting. They think it's a very pleasurable experience when that happens. If you are somebody who's okay with fluids and fluids on your sheets, you will enjoy that experience. So apparently, um, what Habib said to me was that in um, Africa, in a lot of the hotels and so on, uh, they actually have under the sheets the mattress. There are really thick, um, like uh, plastic mattress covers, uh, because they expected that anybody staying over there would be feeling that level of orgasm. So they protect their mattresses with this. Which I'm kind of in two minds. I love the idea that there's just this enormous tradition of female pleasure, but it makes you kind of think, oh my God, do I really want to be sleeping on those mattresses that might have experienced all sorts of. Um, fluids coming out well i'm sure the hygiene levels have been you know taken care of um, but I i'm very actually fascinated by this idea about female pleasure being taken care of i, I do uh, women very rarely speak about squirting and so it is fascinating that this woman has asked about it uh, not like we said at the beginning women re reaching orgasm can be a complex thing um, you know there's a lot involved in it and a lot of women till a much later age haven't orgasm a lot of women will talk about enjoying sex but not reaching orgasm so it's not really uh, you know i i feel like it's not a box that needs to be checked or women need to take the pressure saying, oh, I haven't orgasm, I haven't orgasm. Because a lot of women enjoy sex and, and will talk about having pleasurable sexual experiences, but not reaching orgasm. Um, so squirts, you know, squirting just becomes another type of orgasm in some ways. Sounds absolutely amazing because I know that a lot of women, when they actually um, are finding pleasure during penetrative sex, you know, when, when they're enjoying it, this desire to we does come into most, I mean, it, it is sort of very natural. And most women will stop themselves at that point because they feel that they're actually going to just um, urinate. But maybe for those of you who are trying to, who, who experience it at this point, it might be worth just letting go at one point and seeing what happens. Do you think that that would be a good way to explore this idea? I think, you know, one of, when we talk about orgasm, one of the things we say is that it is about letting go and vulnerability because it is the most, you have to be in a very vulnerable place to finally orgasm because you kind of have to let go of everything. So I would say experiment, you know, if you don't like it, you don't need to go there the next time, but you wouldn't know if you like it or not till you try it, you know, once. So the letting go becomes really important. That's interesting because I know that with any kind of friction, whether you're trying to pleasure yourself or whether you're having um, sex, um, with the kind of friction, particularly on the clitoris, there is generally in women a desire to urinate so maybe uh the day that you decide to let down your guard and actually open yourself up and experiment that's the time to see what happens if you let it go to the next level instead of stopping yourself that might be an interesting way forward an experiment absolutely and if you do try squirting or pleasuring yourself that way do write to us uh, because you know the more power to you if you are trying it and you are experimenting with it. 
what I have found from people who've spoken to me personally about it. So, um, you know, like we've had a group session on this once where somebody actually said that she squirts and she, she's very, very, um, uh, you, you know, she, she's very empowered with her sexuality and she enjoys sex. And she said that she's a squirter. And a couple of the other women were, got almost sort of cross with the idea and they kept insisting that it's not an orgasm. It is simply a case of urinating and not being able to control yourself, that it's a weak bladder and so on. Will you actually just tell us whether that's definitely not the case and that it is, it's more than that? Yeah, absolutely. Because if it was, and you know, women as they grow older do have a weak bladder and, you know, accidents or, um, you know, you start urinating when you sneeze or cough or something like that. that that's quite normal as women, you know, the muscles become weaker. But when we're talking about squirting and female ejaculate, it cannot happen without an orgasm. So those are two different things in some ways, um, because this is happening when you have an orgasm. Because if it's happening other than that, that would be, you know, that you couldn't control your bladder. But because this matches the orgasm and it happens at the time of the climax, squirting and female ejaculate is always connected to an orgasm. You know, that is absolutely fantastic. It's fascinating because you have just opened up a whole new world. I did not know because like I said, a lot of times I've heard uh, this this sort of thing in the groups about no 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 this is not real it's just urine it's just a weak bladder but you've actually clarified that and for me you've opened up a whole new world of female pleasure and I cannot tell you how delighted I am to actually hear you say that yeah as in you know it will, it will be really fun that women are exploring these ideas more and asking those questions more and really um and you need to be very what you know i say this i feel like i say this each time but when women take their sexual pleasure in their own hands they can you know experiment with these ideas and what you know she mentioned a couple of other things like is it good for female health does it have any bad side effects anything like that not that we know of. There is no, like, there's nothing about metabolism or side effects, but obviously okay. if you have good sexual health and a good sexual life, obviously that might have a positive impact on your mental health. Um, so it is a positive experience, but do remember that if you're pressurizing yourself or feeling like, oh, I haven't reached this level of orgasm or your partner now feels the pressure to give you that kind of orgasm, that can actually be problematic. So keep it natural, keep it organic, you know, keep it joyful and fun rather than adding pressure to the whole process. That's wonderful. So like Anvita says, play with it, play with the idea. So, um, as always, we say that we are not over here to tell you what to do or what not to do. That is entirely your decision. But if you choose to do this, we are behind you. We think it's fantastic. And so long as you are not being aggressive or hurting yourself or your partner, it's a great thing to do, to experiment with your pleasure and with your sexuality. In the meantime, we want you to try and explore your pleasure, whether you do it through the mind or through the body. Happy squirting, ladies. As always, on the video, like, comment, subscribe, and send in your questions at info.seema.anand at gmail.com. But don't worry if you haven't got that, uh, that email address. It does appear at the end of the video, and we'll see you next week. See you next week.